If you're a healthcare worker, you're counted on by friends, neighbors, even strangers for help when their health fails or when their lives are threatened. Your job's not easy, and there are hazards that you face every day. Today we're going to focus on bloodborne pathogen hazards. What are they? How do you come into contact with them? And how do you protect yourself from them? What happened was it was my first job out of college and I was working for a group of doctors as a laboratory technician. And they taught me how to draw blood and run these laboratory analysis. And I was doing that and they brought a prisoner over from the jail and they thought he had hepatitis. He was obviously really sick. He was shaken and he had, he was, from what I remember, he was shaken and he uh, had a yellow color to his skin and that's what made the doctors think that he had hepatitis. And I guess I was just so nervous because he was a prisoner from the jail that uh, I didn't like drawing his blood. It was kind of scary. And so I drew his blood and then I stuck myself recapping the needle. And I'd never been trained not to recap needles. So um, they said he had hepatitis, so I ran the serology for hepatitis and it was negative. But, you know, I don't know what type of hepatitis it was. I don't know what type of serology years later. I don't know what type of serology that, that I ran. And I've always worried since then that I've gotten some sort of infection that I don't know about. I didn't want to tell the doctors that I'd messed up. It's what I thought. And I thought I could take care of it myself. If a person is not trained about the hazards that they're going to be working with, the hepatitis and the HIV, in this case primarily, there's not much way they can protect themselves while on the job. Uh, they don't know what to do to protect themselves. They don't know what personal protective equipment to wear. They don't know how to clean up blood spills. And, and these uh, diseases that we're talking about, uh, oftentimes you don't need a lot of blood to get into the body to make someone very sick. So the importance of training is to let people know how to protect themselves from getting these deadly diseases. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, has regulations that are designed to help you stay safe around bloodborne pathogens. There is a bloodborne pathogen section in the OSHA Standards Book. The standard describes the OSHA requirements your workplace must meet. For example, your workplace must have an exposure control plan. This plan details the procedures in place at your workplace to protect you from exposure. It also tells you what to do if you're exposed to bloodborne pathogens. Your employers must make a copy available to you upon your request. Very real and deadly bloodborne diseases are out there. Diseases such as the Ebola virus, mad cow disease, hepatitis, and HIV. However, you can protect yourself from them. These diseases are called bloodborne pathogens because the organisms that cause them are carried in blood. When we talk about the bloodborne pathogens you may face on a daily basis in this country, we're mainly talking about hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. Hepatitis B is well recognized as a health risk for healthcare workers. About one to one and a quarter million Americans are chronically infected with hepatitis B. The disease attacks the liver and infection can lead to chronic liver disease, liver cancer, and death. The good news is that a safe and effective vaccine has been available since 1982 that will protect most people from hepatitis B. Hepatitis C is the most common chronic bloodborne infection in the United States. Most infected persons are not aware of their infection because they're not clinically ill, but they are infectious to others. Most people infected with hepatitis C develop chronic liver disease, making it the leading cause of liver transplants in the U.S there is no vaccine for hepatitis C. Hepatitis symptoms include jaundice, fatigue, dark urine, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, and nausea. Infection with the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, leads to destruction of the body's immune system. This leaves the body defenseless against otherwise harmless diseases. These opportunistic diseases can prove fatal to someone with HIV. Symptoms of HIV infection may not show up for years, yet infected people can still transmit the virus even though they do not appear to be sick. There is no vaccine available for HIV. You cannot catch HIV, hepatitis C, or hepatitis B through the air like a cold or the flu. Or through casual, everyday contact, such as sharing bathrooms or kitchens, through non-sexual social interactions, or through insects or mosquitoes. 
Also, unless there is blood visible, you'll not be infected by contact with urine, feces, nasal secretions, sputum, vomitus, sweat, or tears from an infected person. Now let's talk about how you can protect yourself. Here are 10 vital precautions that are effective against all bloodborne pathogens. Number one, use universal precautions. Universal precautions is an approach to infection control where all human blood and some human body fluids are treated as if they're known to be infectious. In other words, do not come into contact with another person's blood or body fluids. This is your frontline defense against infection. If one of your patients is infected with a bloodborne pathogen, you might not know it. They may not look sick, but they can still transmit HIV, HBV, or HCV to you if you don't take precautions. Number two, wash your hands. Wash your hands with soap and water after removal of gloves and other personal protective equipment, and any time your hands come into contact with blood or body fluids. If you get blood on any part of your body, wash it off immediately. Your employer must provide you with hand washing facilities. Number three, do not remove, recap, bend, or break needles. Use only sharps that are designed with sharps injury protection. Your employer must get input from employees when choosing these devices and they must train you on how to use them effectively and safely. Getting a needle stick from a contaminated sharp is the way you're most likely to contract a bloodborne disease. Use of sharps with engineered sharps injury protection has been proven to reduce needle sticks. Remember, sharps injury protection is not only for the protection of the healthcare worker, but also for downstream sharps handlers, such as trash collectors and laundry workers. When you're finished with the sharp and have activated the sharps injury protection device, dispose of the device in a labeled sharps container. Never remove needles from phlebotomy collection devices and don't reach by hand into containers holding reusable sharps. Number four, do not eat or drink in contaminated areas. Eating, drinking, smoking, applying cosmetics, or handling contact lenses are prohibited where blood or body fluids may be present. Don't store your food or drink where blood or body fluids are present. Number five, wear your PPE. Your employer must provide personal protective equipment, or PPE, adequate to keep blood and body fluids off of your skin, clothes, undergarments, eyes, mouth, or mucous membranes. It's your employer's responsibility to determine exactly what PPE is necessary. Because of the wide variety of exposures in healthcare, PPE decisions will vary widely from task to task, job to job, and facility to facility. The PPE must be provided to you at no cost, but your employer does have the right to require that you wear the PPE they designate. Examples of PPE you might be required to wear include gloves, masks, face shields, goggles, and shoe covers. Remember that your eye protection must have solid side shields. Take off your PPE and put it in a designated place when you leave the work area. That means don't wear your PPE to the lunchroom, lobby, or any other area where work with blood and body fluids should not occur. When you wear contaminated PPE into a clean area, that area then becomes contaminated. Number six, clean and disinfect contaminated work surfaces. The hepatitis B virus can live up to a week or more in a dried state on contaminated work surfaces. That's why it's crucial that you decontaminate your work surfaces at the end of the shift and whenever they become contaminated during the shift. There's a decontamination schedule in your exposure control plan for your facility. There are three types of appropriate disinfectants you may use to decontaminate. Number one, a disinfectant that is EPA registered and tuberculocidal. Number two, a disinfectant that is EPA registered and is also approved to kill HIV and or HBV. Or you can use bleach diluted with water at a rate between 1 to 10 to 1 to 100. If you use diluted bleach, you must make up a fresh solution every day. Wear appropriate utility gloves during decontamination because you don't want to get these chemicals on your skin. Number seven, dispose of regulated waste properly. Place all contaminated sharps in a sharps container, even if you have activated a sharps injury protection device. Remember, if you move a sharps container from one place to another, it must be closed during transport. Never open a sealed container and never reach into one. 
A sharps container should never be allowed to become more than three quarters full. Someone could get a needle stick from your needle while disposing of their needle if the container's too full. Place other contaminated waste in red bags. Make sure your regulated waste does not leak or spill. Don't forget the garbage workers who will handle the waste downstream. A garbage worker could get a needle stick and contract hepatitis or HIV. The Tennessee Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or TOSHA, requires that all regulated waste be packaged and labeled properly. But TOSHA doesn't enforce the rules about the final disposal of that waste. The Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation does that. If you handle contaminated laundry, bag it at the location where it's generated, wear gloves when handling it, and follow the principles of universal precautions. And if the laundry's wet, bag it in a leak-proof bag. Number eight, take the hepatitis B vaccination series. The vaccine is safe and effective and it's your best protection. The three-shot series will protect most people from getting hepatitis B and it must be given to you free of charge. If you have ongoing contact with blood, your blood will be tested one to two months after completion of the vaccine series to determine if you have an adequate antibody response. Remember, there is a vaccine for hepatitis B, but not for hepatitis C or HIV. Number nine, report exposure incidents to your supervisor. An exposure incident means that you've had one of the following actually happen to you. A stick or cut from a needle or other sharp which is contaminated with another person's blood or body fluids. A splash of blood to the mucous membranes of the eyes, nose, or mouth blood on your hands or any other part of your body where there's a cut, scratch, or any non-intact skin. Your employer will provide you with free medical follow-up after such an incident. Number 10, know the biohazard symbol. It means the contents are contaminated with blood or body fluids and you must use the universal precautions when handling or working around labeled materials. Red bags or red containers mean the same thing. Follow these rules and protect yourself from bloodborne diseases. Remember, you cannot catch a bloodborne disease through food and water or casual contact. You must come directly in contact with blood or body fluids, and that you can avoid. These precautions aren't just a good idea, they're the law. Now, Tosh has developed five easy questions to evaluate your training on bloodborne pathogen hazards. What does universal precautions mean? Treat all blood, body fluid, and other potentially infectious materials as if they're contaminated. What do you do when there's a blood spill? Put on the appropriate PPE, clean up the area, disinfect with the disinfectant and dispose of the wipes and gloves and other trash in the biohazard bags. What do you do with contaminated sharps and laundry? Place laundry in special bags, handle as little as possible, and use PPE when handling or sorting. Put sharps immediately into sharps containers. Have you been offered the hepatitis B vaccination free of charge and did you take it? Where's the exposure control plan? Has it been explained to you and have you been trained? Bloodborne pathogens are dangerous. Make universal precautions part of doing your job. Caring for patients, human compassion, professional responsibility. These are characteristics of healthcare workers. You're important to your patients, to your coworkers, and most of all, to your family. Protect yourself so you can be there when they need you.